It's been a while since I made the last video, um, but there were a few changes uh, recently, so probably can notice behind me what is going on. Um, so what we're going to talk about a lot and now it's going to be um, uh, plenty of Dell equipment, and, but not only, uh, but most of it definitely and what DAO I can integrate with as well. So you can see uh, behind me, uh, there's a few bits and bobs that we're gonna go through as well, uh, like I mentioned before. So, uh, but I, what I like you to show today, it's, it's really something, um, something new, but um, something that I noticed that uh, plenty of people has actually started using it a lot, a lot uh, more than in the last couple of years. And uh, because of what is it capable of right now these days. So I just like to move on. I'm actually going to show you what I'm talking about. So let me uh, jo just show you my screen. So there you are. So there I am on the bottom. Um, so what you have here, uh, this is the uh, GUI of the DAO uh, recorder, NVR uh, 5 series. Um, and it, it is an intelligent machine as well. And so I'd just like to show you the process of how to set up this recorder uh, with the monitoring station, which is really nice and straightforward. And um, so this is the local grid, really user friendly. So these main icons that are for the end user to go through, like you see the search, it's the pay playback, AI, this is the intelligent features, alarm, backup maintenance, and pause if you're looking for to use the pause we can uh, i can show you that on, on some other uh, time but in this case now i'd just like to show you the uh, the actual network settings so we're just going to go into the tcp ip settings on the left hand side top corner and it depends who you dealing with what kind of uh, company you're dealing with there will be a small business a residential customer uh, you have different options you now you can use here. So you can use the DHCP, which is going to be the, the easiest um, of them all. So you can actually um, enable the DHCP and leave it as it is. Click apply and modem on site will assign the IP address automatically to your uh, recorder. Or you can just ask the IT guys on site, IT crowd, to provide you with the, e, the, the, e, the IP settings, IP address, submit mask and the gateway. And once they have them all, you you can just test it and make sure this particular IP address is free to go on the local network and in the in, in my case like you see here IP is available so I can just click OK then I know this IP address it's fixed on the local network and um, then of course you can you can use a third-party DNS if you like as well so I can use like for example uh, 8.8 and that 8 that's the actual, by the way, it's a Google uh, DNS. And that four. Or you can just use the, no, the, the DNS that the internet provider is gonna provide you with. So this is all, just make sure the actual recorder is online first. Uh, next, we're just gonna go to the email settings. And again, it depends on the monitoring station. Uh, different monitoring stations might have different um, uh, settings or different notifications um, so in this case like you see here um, we're just gonna use our email address um, to send notifications to the monitoring station and monitoring station will receive three different snapshots of the event so uh, once they will receive those uh, notifications they will know that something is going on and they need to um, action it basically so like you see here this is just an example email uh, I just use uh, smtb.gmail.com with port 25, some test email and, and password of that email. So we need to use the email address to send information from. And then you can have up to three different receivers. So it could be yourself, could be monitoring station and any other third party uh, if you like. Uh, but usually the monitoring station will provide you with all the details that you need to enter on this page. Um, together with the SMTP server port number and the uh, receiver receiver email address and a subject you know you can you can call it whatever you like or whatever monitoring station want you to call it 
uh, it could be like an identification number or something. Um, so once we have all the settings here done, uh, we can click the test button to test the connection if the email is actually working. You should get the uh, OK message, that is fine. The other option you have is the alarm center. So if there's a type of the monitor station that will uh, provide you with the alarm server address, this is the place you like to go is the alarm center. And in this case, you just need to make sure it's enabled. They will provide you with the server address and the port number and just click apply. Once the, uh, uh, once the intrusion detection line crossing is um, uh, triggered, it will send a notification to the monitoring station. So now we're just gonna move on to the actual uh, setup of the, uh, of the rules, of the intrusion detection rules and in, in, in the line crossing in this case. Um, so go back to the main menu and on the top of the page, you see this AI, so we're just gonna click into it. And we have three options on the left hand side. Uh, the second one, that's where you're gonna set up all the intrusion detection zones and everything else. So that where we go now, uh, it's the parameters and IVS. Like you see here, I have some parameters already done, so I can just remove them and start from scratch. Really important uh, note here, it depends what type of the recorder you have there and what type of the cameras we're dealing with. Um, different recorders, there might be a recorder that is an intelligent recorder and it would have built-in uh, AI feature. Um, as well as the camera, it could be the camera with the AI. So you can choose which of the devices is gonna do the processing for you. So it's the AI by the camera or is AI by recorder. So if you have the camera, you can just set up everything through the camera using the NVR. So in this case, I'm just gonna click the add button and I can choose what type of the uh, intrusion um, or tripwire will be, will be uh, applied here. So first I can go with a tripwire and click the draw button. Once I click the draw button, like you see here, this is the front of my house, and I can just draw the line. So for example, this is my fence, and just want to make sure no one's gonna, if someone's gonna jump over, I'm just gonna make sure uh, I will be notified. And in this case, I just like to filter off notifications, I mean the trigger by the human only, and I can choose in what direction. So click OK, and that's almost it. The only thing now, I just need to make sure that when someone's gonna jump over the fence in this case, um, I just like to send an email and send a signal to the monitoring station so they will know what's the story, what is going on, and they're gonna receive those three snapshots. Uh, and the other thing is you can schedule that when this feature is gonna be armed or disarmed. So in this case, I can just go ahead and uh, make sure like during the night time on Sunday, this particular time it won't be affecting and the, the intrusion detection, or I can just link them all together the whole week and just draw that box here and make sure whatever I have excluded here, like you see there's no blue bar, this is the time when my intrusion detection line crossing won't be, uh, won't be working. It will be just that particular time from the six until eight and that's it. So click OK, make sure you click apply. The other thing is I have this super duper um, TIO camera, uh, which I'm gonna talk about at some stage uh, later on. Um, I'm gonna do a separate video about this camera because it, this camera is amazing. It's, it's nothing that I ever come across, really something. Like you see here on the bottom of the page, uh, this uh, NVO is allowing you to select what type of the audio message this camera is gonna announce. So I can click the set setting button and have plenty of different messages preloaded already. And I can use one of them to uh, scare someone off from, from the premises if they jump over the fence. So private land, no entry, and just repeat once or twice or how many times you want. Uh, click OK, but also there's a warning light, uh, which I'm gonna show you on a totally different video about this, uh, about this camera. This is a, like a blue and red light is gonna start flashing. And you can tell, you know, how, how long it's gonna last and how uh, the, you, know, you can change the flicker frequency as well. Um, it will look like a, like a police car kind of lights. So click OK, hit apply, and every time someone's gonna jump over that um, uh, fence, it will trigger an out, it will announce the message and it will trigger the light as well. So click apply, go back, make sure you apply here as well. 
What else we can do? We can add another rule, um, but this, th this time we're just gonna select the intrusion. And once we have the intrusion selected, again, we click the draw. And in this case, uh, I'm just gonna make a zone here, uh, for example, just in this part of the picture. So if someone's gonna cross this zone or just suddenly appear in the zone, it will trigger the alarm and it could be a human or motor vehicle. So just click OK. And again, I'm just gonna go to trigger and make sure I enable those report alarm and send email. Like you see here, there's other features you can trigger, PTZ linkage, for example. So if you have one of the cameras moving around, one of the presets could be triggered and move to the direction where the zone is and just give you a look uh, on the different angle, basically. So uh, the local buzz buzzer of the recorder, select different tour on the actual uh, live view of the uh, HDMI or the VGA output uh, and so on and so on. Um, so you can just apply those settings and go back and apply it again here. Just make sure it's all saved, enabled, perfect. So now if I go back to my live view, uh, so this is the live view and there is, there's a thermal camera, by the way, I'm gonna talk about some stage as well. Um, but again, there will be a totally new video for that as well. So like you see here, this is our, uh, our tripwire. So if someone's gonna jump over the fence, um, it will trigger the alarm and send the notifications to the monitoring station. Or if you like, you know, you can send it to your phone as well. So the uh, notification will, will pop up on your phone. So you need to act quickly and see what the start is. Uh, I can, of course, I can just click one of the um, most recent events here and see what's actually triggered um, in the past. So I can just go play and you can see someone just cross my line here, just move it in. And then also there is like a car passing by, so I can also see that car will trigger. Very nice and simple and straightforward. There's nothing really that can go wrong here unless, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's all really, really, really straightforward. Like looking at the GUI itself, it's so nice and simple to, to go with. And like more advanced settings, it will be on the bottom for like an installer. But for the end user, what else do you need? Like um, if you scroll mouse between them, you have the display and audio, but the main page, it, that's the only thing they need, that the end user would need basically. So you have the search and you have the live view. Of course, the live view, this page on the right hand side, I can, uh, I can hide that, um, this, this exact AI mode. I can just go with the regular mode, live view, and I have full screen. Uh, but then I won't see the most recent results on the right hand side. But if I like to see what actually happened in the past, I can just go main menu, go AI and AI search. And in IVS, uh, I can just select the camera in question, the exact time frame and date and different type of the event. If I like, if I like to narrow down the search, I can just search for any um, that has been triggered in the past. So like you see here, there's something been moving around here on the front of the house so I can just double click and the car should the van should pass over there here you go so um, and it triggered so every single trigger will be listed here if I liked so yeah that's uh, I would just like to show you that really cool uh, piece of equipment I have here for testing it's really something it's really uh, like from what I can see, the 90% of the false alarms has been reduced straight away uh, with, no, uh, with no issues like any dogs or, or cats, anything on the front of the, of the house or in the back garden, that would be completely eliminated and it will only trigger by a you know, human or a vehicle if you like. So um, if you have any questions, comment down below. Uh, you, can, you can also email me if you like uh, as well. Uh, there will be no more videos obviously coming up, coming up very soon. Uh, like you see here behind me, like I have lots of lots of stuff to go through. Uh, so I just like to show them all and, and just so you know how to set them up and what they can actually do. So thank you very much guys for today and I'll see you on the next video uh, very soon. Talk to you. Take care. Bye.